Rated M for Mature. Here we go. What's going on, people? Welcome to episode 28 of the X Podcast. Not the double XP. This is the X Podcast. Oh, come on now. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for rocking with us, episode 28 of the Double XP Podcast. If you're listening on Pie Beans or iTunes, much appreciated. If you're listening or watching on the Tick Network channel, thanks for rocking with us. And if you are live, much appreciated. So I know it's been a while since uh, we've been around, but the boys are back, the girls are back, the crew is back together, and it's a beautiful thing. So I'm going to start off with the introductions, of course, with my light skinned brother from somebody else's mother. Mr. Nicodemus X. Yo, what's good? What's good, everybody? It's Nicodemus, the king of indies himself, and I'm just now getting over L.A., man. I, I did some things in L.A. that I'm not proud of, but I made it back, and I'm good now. <laughs> you did some things like what? Go on, if you can't make a statement like that and not fess up, <laughs> you got to tell us what you did. Did you finally get tired of women? Get drunk at. <laughs> I, I'll, I'm gonna say. I know Bethesda. I know how they get down. Yes, yes. I'm gonna say there was there was there was too too much too much drinking and not enough me remembering what happened. Just mm. like. Oh wow! <laughs> shout, shout out to the shout out to the seven dislikes we got once once the thing went up yesterday. <laughs> Wow. Shout, out to the, shout out to the one person with seven Gmail accounts. Uh, we appreciate wow. you, bro. He is come. Man, I don't even get that now. <laughs> We appreciate we appreciate the, the engagement the engagement we appreciate, we appreciate that. it because it counts regardless. It does. It really does. Next next up, we got my right hand, one man, Miss Two V One herself, Mama well, Cena. You know, I wish I could say that I did some things in LA that I'm not proud of, but I can't <laughs> say that because <laughs> I you know I I didn't do anything I'm not proud of. I, I, I kept it clean. I kept it good. I kept it wholesome. You kept it classy, fam. I, I, I tried to. I tried to. And I know how she is. To That's what? Girl, man. I said, I saw you with Miss Tech, and I know how she is. You got into some trouble. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Yes, you know what's fun what's funny is because a couple of folk thought that I knew Miss Tech Not Fancy before I got there. It was like I was like, no, I, we had just met uh at the Xbox Fan Fest. I mean, we had podcasts together a few times, but I, I that was the first time I had met her. So but um I, I had a I had a I had an awesome time. LA is absolutely beautiful. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Beverly Hills, Rodale Drive. I couldn't get enough of that. Touring the Hollywood stars and the, the food was absolutely exquisite. I, it was just fabulous. Well, not all the food. There was a diner though that I checked out that just wasn't too good, but it was just beautiful. Uh, the traffic is atrocious. I don't know how you guys drive in the LA traffic. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> gee, gee whiz. But um, I had a great time. Uh, I, I really did. So, um, I mean, we can, we can, I don't know if we're going to spend how much time we're going to spend on that. And then of course, Xbox fan fest, uh, being, you know, the Royal treatment. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this and I hope this doesn't sound like a, a, a truck I'm trolling or I'm fangirling, but Nicodemus and fame hmm. PlayStation experience does not equate to Xbox fan oh. fest. Okay. Oh, wow. so let's just, how you say that? I'm, 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 I'm intrigued. What, what makes you say that though? Let, there is oh. no comparison. No comparison. I, what? No, I have hold been on, hold on, hold on. Let, let, let's come back to that. Cause we still, we still got one more introduction. I'm gonna let y'all oh. get back to that. We're okay. Come on, get right, back right, to right. It. I need to hear about uh, last, last, but definitely not least. Crunk girl. What's happening? Man. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing much, man. I'm I'm excited, man. I've been waiting for the crew to get back together. We got a lot to talk about. It was a a lot of people talk shit about E3, but I thought it was a, I had a good time watching the different shows and a whole bunch of new games and ideas and seeing the community that I know, like the people that I actually know, having a great time. Um, so yeah, man, it's it's been good, man. I've I've been sitting here just watching trailers and. Getting excited for all these Christmas presents we're getting in 2018. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely gonna cover that because 2018 seems to be yeah. stacked. But I do wanna I do want uh Ma to go ahead and educate the people in the world on why Fan Fest 
is um, better than PlayStation Experience. Yeah, please and wow. en please enlighten us. I want to hear this. And she's gone. She gone. <laughs> yeah. Good night. Good night, everybody. Whoa. All right. Well, since she can't, you know, basically respond and tell us why uh, what she said was a total lie. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, defend it, Nick. Defend it to the death of you. Yeah, what? no, it was a total, total lie. Um, hey, a, a, Mama Cedar? what? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, she went like. Oh, oh no! There she go. She'll be back. There oh, she go. Wait, there she go. Ma. She having problems, fam. She having problems. She got, to, she got to tell us later. We're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and jump on, jump on to these topics today. Let's start off with um, with Sony. There's some interesting things came out from one of y'all's favorite executives, uh, Nicodemus X, and it's kind of <laughs> should hit you a little bit close to home. Yeah. So apparently, the reason, and I know Nick pointed this out when it was happening, there was no Andy Scissor reel, is because there's a particular person, Sony, who doesn't feel as if that's a uh, that's important that they are uh, irrelevant. And I want to know what the King of Indies thinking about Sony taking a poo poo mm -hmm. on Indies when they used to love Indies. I got a lot to say about that. Yeah, yeah. So Jim Ryan, he's been um, putting his foot in his mouth uh, quite a bit lately. And uh, so, yeah, with the, the conference, one of the things I did touch on that I did not uh, appreciate, uh, besides some of the games that they showed, was the fact that they did not highlight, um, you know, in any indie games um, in comparison to Microsoft's conference. So I was, I was very disappointed about that. And then Jim Ryan did basically just state that um, showing indies and like kind of talking about them, highlighting them to this uh, degree is irrelevant right now because they basically, you know, this ain't his exact quote, but this is what I got from it. They basically have moved on to bigger and better things. He stated that in 2013, 2014, uh, it was important for them to talk about it at that time to solidify that the PS4 is, you know, supporting indies and stuff like that. Now that they've got PSVR and the AAA games and stuff like that, it's not important. It's irrelevant to talk about that right now. And um, I feel a certain type of way about that um, because I feel like, you know, the indies obviously are relevant. They are very important. They are the core of gaming to me. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the indie games we get and we see this whole generation have been better than a lot of the AAA games. When AAAs were shitting on everybody and giving you half-assed games and stuff like that for $60, $80 and stuff, indies were providing a complete experience for a good price. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of us fell back on the indies because the AAA has, was doo-doo in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So to basically discount indies in such a way, I don't I don't feel right about that. I don't like the way Sony is uh treating the indies right now. Yeah, there's plenty of indies on the PlayStation platform and stuff like that. But the thing about indies is they need the most exposure. They need more exposure than triple A and stuff. And that's why you so like about Sony is that they would take the time to highlight these great games because otherwise we wouldn't even know about them a lot. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know about these gems and they they like a lot of indie devs they depend on big time publishers to help promote this stuff you know what i'm saying because there's a lot of freaking money involved in marketing and promoting and all that stuff so i feel like sony is really you know dropping the ball on these indies and somebody needs to stick a freaking sock in jim ryan's mouth um because this man is making everybody look bad right now so yeah i, I feel a certain type of way about it man i don't care you know what people feel like oh indie's not important you shouldn't show indies at e3 i've heard all that bullshit. Um, I totally disagree. Totally disagree. I got you. I got you. Car girl. What, what what you think about your boy Jim Ryan, man? Nick said put a sweaty sock in his mouth. He yep. needs to do need to put a dirty Sony, sock in his mouth. He <laughs> needs to do what Sony has been doing, and that is shut up. Don't say nothing. Like saying nothing has helped you a lot. Like, don't don't speak. Just let everything that's happening speak for you. This is what I was so afraid of when I kept telling people. I do not want Sony or their executives to get the big head because I don't want them to do what they did last generation and fall off and then have to depend on themselves to, to get out of the hole that they're in. They need to be more humble. Jim Ryan needs to shut up. Like, it's just like, don't be a hypocrite because for the first few years you loved it. And all of a sudden now you don't love them no more, but you still like, you can't you can't have it both ways that's one of the reasons why a lot of people were sticking with sony is was because of the indies because some of these indies that they were pushing were really good indies and were really good games 
there were a lot of a ton of new indies this year that I liked that were on Microsoft stage and Sony showed in the pre-show. And I'm like, Sony, why didn't you show some of these games in your regular show? Be like you always do, because Sony fans like Nick or me or some of the other people in Sony that like something like that like the PS4 were looking for those types of games. To right. be in the show and to right. be highlighted. Like yeah. games like Matterfall, I feel could have had more time. Um, mm-hmm. at least what they showed on the pre-show should have been in the main show. Yeah, I agree. And all of those games that were that were shown could have been games that could have been added to the these are the ones that are coming out this year. And then we got the 2018 games. And you would have balanced it out more than what they did. And I didn't I didn't like how Jim Ryan came out real cocky, like please shut up. Like shut up. Where did this guy <laughs> come from? Where did he where did he come from? Is, is like, no, if I'm wrong. Like, whose man's is this? Jim is Ryan's been around, but he's been quiet and he mm. should stay that way. Was this the same guy who came out and gave the reason why they're not doing crossplay? Correct me if I'm wrong. Was it him? I, gave that statement? Don't, I don't know because that I don't know uh if that's the same guy or yeah that. i don't know man this is the first time i actually paid him any attention so because I don't know no, sony has been perfect all generation with their pr stuff right and then this last this last month has been like footing them out with the whole crossplay thing well ugh. i mean say you don't want to do it don't say think of the children think think of the children that's a horrible excuse when you got nintendo doing it. When he tried to, <laughs> yeah when he tried they tried to spin that shit was crazy but the reason why they're not doing it I don't understand it, but I do understand it because last generation, we tried it. And you know why we tried it? Because we was down. We went up up top and we went, we have our chest out. And Microsoft was like, hell no, we ain't doing that. So now that we up above and we winning right now, whatever, they not doing that. <laughs> they not, I'm, I'm, I'm just being a fact. Well, give, right? give a bad excuse to think of the children. You can't yeah, say right. that when it's yeah, that, I, No, no, no. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Oh, like that, that they yeah, could um, shout out to shout out to Rambo's corner. He said, Yeah, it's the same person. It was Jim Ryan's it one. Is? Oh, okay. See, I didn't right. yeah, he, he needs to sit down and shut his head because that's you know, that's one of the problems. See, I, I like Phil Spencer, right? I think Phil Spencer is an upstanding guy. And, and I spoke with Nick when he got back from California. And Nick, you know, told me, you know, he thinks Phil Spencer's an uh, uh, upstanding guy, he liked the guy, but sometimes I think Phil needs to shut up. And right. I think mm-hmm. Sean has been perfect this whole gym with their PR. Right? Like this one guy who can't keep his mouth closed. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't, you can't, you can't go by the book. And why hasn't Sony like? Why hasn't Sony like rebuttaled what he said? Like, uh, came out with a statement and said, "No, that's not true." I mean, he's obviously getting a lot of heat and attention for what he's saying. So why hasn't Sony came out and say, "Um, you know, we like clear it up or something at least." You no, know what needs to happen? Stop talking and let Yoshida talk. If it ain't Yoshida or uh. Or somebody who we don't know don't, don't talk let me let me let me tell you about uh, let me hold on let me tell you about let me talk about your man yoshida the the guy i used to Uh-oh. call uncle, Uh-oh. yeah the guy I used to call uncle shu okay let me tell you about your man yoshida real quick okay so yoshida oh, yoshida. yoshida yoshida at e3 <laughs> yoshida at e3 had some type of chip on his shoulder man like yoshida did not want to shake hands with anybody yoshida didn't want to take pictures with nobody i don't know what type of you i don't know what type of yo fam listen i don't know what type of day yoshida was having but i saw him and i was like hey what's going on i was like what's going on shoe and he looked at me and he barely like wanted to shake my hand bro like he rolled his eyes at me man and he was like oh, in a rush he was, he was he was in a rush he was like just taking off and people trying to get pictures with him he's like no no pictures leave i gotta go leave me alone like I don't know what was I don't know what crawled up his butt that day, dog. But that was that was my first impression of him. And first impressions they they stick in my mind for a long time. My first impressions of Uncle Shu wasn't so homely. Um, you did not like that though. That's weird. Did you mean not like that? I don't know what was going on with him, man. But that, that was, was he, having a, a jack. Did not thing. want. To, and then on the flip side, <laughs> on the flip side, I saw um Uncle Phil. I saw Uncle Phil. Um, yeah, I call Phil Spencer Uncle Phil now because he's a stand-up guy. I saw him and he had bodyguards all around him. Phil Spencer, um, he he's pretty stacked, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? As far as like muscles and stuff go. So he had his chest down and stuff, he had bodyguards around, him. he looked like the freaking president walking around there, but he was like shaking everybody's hand and stuff. Hey, how you doing? You, you want a picture with him? He's like, Yeah, come on in, get a picture. So he was like the total opposite of yeah. shoe, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm not saying I'm not saying that that's shoe's personality or nothing like that. I'm taking it a bit extreme, but that day something was wrong with my man shoe. Yeah, I mean, for me, I uh, he was at PSX, 
and we met him actually outside of PSX one time, and he was cool. So maybe I don't know, but you know what? Though most of the the people that um were extremely friendly were like Adam Boys and um what's his name? G uh the guy for the Vita uh that always wears the ho- the hockey jerseys and shit. Like he's cool. They like all of them are mad cool. So I don't know. Shoe must been having a bad day or something because he's usually not like that. I don't, I don't think I don't think the whole aura around E3 is trying to get Nick to make Xbox his primary console. Hey, he was doing, doing, man, he was doing man, everything man. about Xbox way too much. <laughs> I don't know why 18 looking so right, boy, for everybody. Hey, let me tell, let me tell, but, but let me speak, let me speak on that though, man, because like, yeah, they to me, uh, Microsoft had the better conference or whatever like that. Uh, you know, saying games are games to me, and if I'm like, you know, ecstatic and hyped for a game, regardless of what platform is on, I'm gonna be hyped for it. And they just show more games that I'm into at their conference. And then also on the showroom floor, also there was there was an atmosphere there to where it seemed like Microsoft was more like inviting. Like they they had a, a good section where they had a lot of indie games they were showing off and stuff, and um, you know, a, a lot of like double A titles, and of course they had the triple A titles, but they had more variety even on the showroom floor in their area. On the flip side, on Sony's side, it was it was mainly like the big titles, really like um, you know, Call of Duty, Battlefront, all that stuff. That was the main thing they had. They didn't really have a section for like the smaller titles. I mean, they had Matterfall over there, Sprinkle here and there, but it, I don't know. And then they had a VR, of course, but it's like they just didn't have that that come home feel. Like I kept finding myself in the Microsoft section. Like I wanted to go to the Sony section and I went there a couple of times and I felt like lost. I felt like I wasn't even a part of what was going on over there. I don't know how to explain it, but I went to the Microsoft section. I, I was playing games over there. I, I play more Xbox games at, at, at freaking up, up at E3 than PlayStation games. I had that controller in my hand way more than PlayStation games. And that's just weird, you know, so. I don't think so. I think it's understandable knowing the types of games that you like to play. I would think that you would be in Microsoft, uh, Area. Yeah, yeah. It's so much. Yeah. I'm just using so many, the, I'm just used to so many highlighting those, though. Yeah, for someone like me, for instance, I probably will be in Sony's little area because a lot of their games I, I like, and I'm not a I'm too I'm not a crazy indie fan like that, so I probably wouldn't. But I probably knowing me, I probably be everywhere because I was man, but I saw so many games that are coming out this year that look so good. Oh my god! As a gamer, I'm excited. Everybody is like so doom and gloom, and I'm like, "Yo, are you serious? Like, it's so many good games that are gonna come out this year. Like, what? What? I, I don't know what people were expecting. I, well, I kind of do. Yo, know, this year, this year, even though a lot of a lot of E3 pertain to 2018, pretty much on both sides, and we're gonna touch on it. This year, still got some good games coming out. You know, we still got Hellblade. Exactly. We still got Crackdown Three. People are uh, so I, doom and gloom, and I, I understand kind of why because. The past two years, it seems like when Microsoft did something, Sony just took it to a whole nother level. And I, I kept telling people, Sony can't do that every year. They're not going to be able to. Like, they're not going to be able to just hit you with crazy shit every single year. Like, there were going to be some stumbles. Like, 2014 was a stumble. That wasn't like a fantastic year for Sony. But 2015 and 2016, now, those two years were it, it, crazy. Like, those were the best two conferences they've had this generation. But I knew they weren't going to hit that level every time. But I now, was excited for what they showed. Before we switch topics, I need Nick to have my back on something because I said it when I saw it, and people thought I was crazy. Nick, what's that? Tell them, tell them, Super Lucky Tales going to be dope. Yo, okay, let me let me just clear dope. let me let me clear up any misunderstandings anybody may have about uh, Super Lucky's Tale. Um, I played the game. I got just first hands on with it it is running at a full 4k 60 frames per second let's start off with that you know saying um the game looks absolutely beautiful not only does it look beautiful it is challenging not only is it challenging but the 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 controls the controls are so smooth and free-flowing man so responsive it is bringing it back to a real 3d platformer like a real good excellently made 3d platformer i'm gonna say this too I played a few minutes, about 10 minutes or so of Super Lucky Tales, and I played about 10 minutes or so of the new Crash. Super Lucky Tales is shitting on Crash Remake. It's it's completely shitting on it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Cause, because Crash, I feel like it's this, it's those same controls. It's those same confined controls, and they, they feel real stiff. 
with Super Lucky Tales, it's the type of platform I like. You know what I'm saying? It's very responsive, quick. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Super Lucky Tales is going to be that game. It's going to be the platformer that we were waiting for, for for a long time. You know what I'm saying? A lot of platforms let us down, like Ukulele. You know what I'm saying? Everybody thought that was going to be the greatest. It was just okay. Um, but I think Super Lucky Tales is going to bring it. You know what I'm saying? It looked dope, but at first, though, I thought that drunk was Conker. Yeah, I think everybody, <laughs> yeah, everybody did. Everybody did. In the crowd, everybody was like, Conker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to front. I thought that drunk was Conker at first. <laughs> Poor Conker. Uh, I think we got Mama Cedar back. Mama Cedar, are you in the building? Okay, y'all can hear me. There you go. Yeah. You got it. See, you know what? I know what happened. I know exactly. She's back. What She's back. No, Nicodemus sent all them ponies. Ah. That pony, <laughs> that pony virus. Yes, that pony you. virus to get all up into my internet. Hit you. Get a now, We were just about to switch topics, Mama Cedar, but before we do, I do want to. We have to go back to something you said earlier, and I have to get your, I have to get those that out of you on why Fan Fest is better than PSX. We got okay. another. Okay, like like I was saying, when I went to PlayStation Experience, I had to pay. I believe it was like eighty or ninety dollars. Uh, to attend and you know I had to there were um, fast food places to buy my food to buy my drinks whatever I want I had to purchase um, and there were games on the floor of course that I could play and it was great and it was lovely but the point I'm making is that the PlayStation experience is not the equivalent to Xbox Fan Fest. Xbox Fan Fest is a whole different another category. First of all I did you don't have to pay for tickets okay it's free they're like two days of just complete royalty. You are spoiled rotten. We were able to not only attend the Xbox media briefing, but we were also able to play the games for four hours on the Xbox One X, okay, while we were served, oh my gosh, a buffet of food that's like w lovely, wonderful food, okay, uh, open bar, okay, you can just walk up and get wine or if you want, uh, you know, whatever drinks, mixed drinks that you want. Okay. And it, and it's just so much more elaborate. We were all given one year of Xbox Live Gold. Ooh. We were also given a year of, of um, the Xbox Game Pass. We were also also given uh, a Seagate two, two gigabyte hard drive, as well as the stereo headsets on uh, the Plantronics, Dolby Atmos, uh, the, when I went on Amazon, they were like nine nine dollars or something. But we were all given those as well as other other like just trinkets and gifts and T-shirts. We were just spoiled mm -hmm. rotten. And all I'm mm -hmm. saying is it's not the comparison. You can't compare the two. If Xbox does something to the equivalent of PlayStation experience, it is not Fan Fest. That's what I'm saying. Fan Fest is in, right. a, in a category of its own. I thought you said it was like um, better than PSX, though. I thought you were making that comparison. Well, no, what I said was I wasn't saying that I said you can't compare. There's no comparison. Oh, that's what I'm saying. When it's you, not. Okay, okay. so when, the, you said that, when you said that, I thought you were saying in terms as it shits on PSX. That's oh, what well, I think well, you were saying. Well, I'm not saying because that's not my jargon. I don't talk like that. But what I'm saying is. I know nothing. that, Miss Classy. It's, Damn. No, it's not about being classy. <laughs> it's about I'm not saying that it. Well, if you want me to say it, I'll say it is better. It is because it's a it's a different standard. It's a, it's a higher level. It is not the equivalent. Is yeah. what I'm saying. So like, it how many not. people? How many people was at the fan fest? Like, how many people were there? Oh, I mean, five hundred tickets were given oh, so out. You but, had five hundred people. But yeah, and then we were bused. We were bused from the locations. Okay, they had bus services for us to, um, between the Galen Center and um, and where the the meetup place. They had a specific place for us to gather to meet and and greet where they just, they had like food trucks outside where you can just, if you wanted, I think there were like wraps on one and then there was like this uh, chicken and look, just just look um, uh, menu on, on, on the other truck. So you could just like pick and choose where you wanted to go. We all just felt spoiled. Yeah, it sounds to me, it sounds to me like if you are not media and you want to go to the thing like E3 or whatever, Fan Fest is the thing to do. Um, because it seems to me like you guys play more games than any of us. Yes, Honestly, we did. We yes, had, we, yes, we did. And then we had, we had, uh, oh my gosh, I don't even, I can't even tell you how many consoles were set up for us to play. They, the room was just filled with roles and they had the Xbox One X, S, and then they had the uh, PC. And they had the PC and Xbox One X. 
games running side by side, which I thought was kind of. Yeah, so the Fan Fest and the uh, PSX, there's no comparison because the PSX yeah. is like on a big, much, much grander scale as far as like volume of people and stuff like this. This is like more condensed. More intimate. Stuff. Yeah, this is a more intimate type of thing. So it's not, it's not the same. It is not. It's not. So I, I do want to show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This seems dope, I, I, though. I think it was girl. Did y'all have scrimp? Did y'all have scrimp? Y'all have scrimp? <laughs> no, we didn't have scrimp. Y'all didn't have no scrimp? No, we didn't have scrimp. It but, seemed uh, like it was it was cool though, because I saw you and Miss Tech and a couple other people that was um actually in the fan fest, and it seemed like y'all was having a great time. So I'm happy. We we were we were having a great time, and it was because we all were received yeah. as fans, and then having the Xbox team actually come out and sit with us and talk with us and engage with us, and, and especially the women. I have to say, when I attended the Women in Gaming meeting. Uh, Jen Page, you know, and Jasmine Lawrence and having them come and actually sit with us and talk with us and engage with regular conversation and drink wine with us as as um, peer to peer versus, you know what I mean? Mm. Us it's feeling how, like these are exact people of authority or position. It was just so down to earth. That's all. That's how I felt when I met David Jaffe for the first time. And he actually sat down on like, we were just sitting down having a normal conversation. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with video games. That was like the, yeah. that was out of every, even like even going to play games and stuff. That was like one of the best moments of my life. Like, mm -hmm. especially when you look up to these people and you actually meet them and they talk to you about stuff that has nothing to do with video games. It's just like yes. Conversation. yes. That was amazing. Like, yes. David Jaffe like, like made my day. <laughs> now we do got to switch topics here um i do want to go around the panel and get everyone's thoughts so as you guys see we were talking about the xbox one x pros and cons so i do want to go around the panel and get everyone's thoughts on that um let's talk with you nick pros and cons x right. i got an echo going on um uh, nick uh pros and cons xbox one x brother all right so um xbox one x aka black jesus <laughs> he um he came, he came he came in there to offer salvation and deliverance and i think you know the xbox community uh got what they needed uh for the most part out of him so shout out to black jesus and um but the xbox one x the pros are yes it is definitely a extremely powerful console uh, for the price. I don't have a problem whatsoever with the price. Uh, I think 499 is a great price for this console cuz like when you look at these specs compared to let's say something less you know powerful uh like a powerful pc or whatever trying to run games that like this um you're not going to be able to build a pc for the 500 dollars that can run games like this i'm sorry uh, I, I see i see i, I see things on, I, 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 see, I see things i see things on twitter and stuff all the time that say contradictory things but when i talk to real people in real life and it people that know their shit and stuff you're not building a pc at five hundred dollars, that can do what the Xbox One X is going to do. So for that price, um, I definitely think it's a pro. Um, uh, also, um, the games, you know, that I see running in native 4K, um, checkerboard uh, 4K, whatever you call it, sparse render 4K, they look absolutely amazing. I was definitely impressed to see these games on the big giant 4K screen. Um, so the, now the con, the con would be for me is that. Um, I think that our obsession with resolution is trumping frames per second. And so, so it, it doesn't seem like they built this console to really account for that um, because the CPU um, didn't really get a major bump. You know what I'm saying? They put everything else into you know, um, the teraflops and all that other stuff to make sure that you can get the highest resolution possible. But as far as the CPU goes, it's still pretty weak. So that's the con for me. Um, but that's indicative of what the community wants and what the fans wants because everybody's always talking about resolution. So basically Microsoft, Sony, they're giving you what you want, you know what I'm saying, as a consumer. But there are some of us who would rather have games running at 60 frames on consoles consistently, finally, a stable 60, finally. But that's not the case. So uh, that's the only con I got, really. Um, it, the, the console itself looks great. It's smaller. That's a huge pro. I mean, to be able to fit, you know, that much, you know, power into this thing and um, and it be so small and stuff. That was very impressive as well. Um, so yeah, definitely more pros than cons. I, I was impressed with it. Okay, Crunk girl, pros and cons. Pros and cons. Xbox One X. I don't actually have too many cons. Um. Like I said, like uh, Nick said before, the price, 
I kept telling people this thing was not going to be three ninety nine. And even I think even you, fam, I think me and you both were were saying that this joint was going to be around uh four ninety nine. Um, I think the price is legit. I, I don't. I'm not mad at the price, even though I mean, who wouldn't want to pay three ninety nine? That's still that would have been a a, a excellent price, but four ninety nine, not bad at all for me. Um, uh, what they showed running on the system, uh, I thought looked pretty good. Um, the the system is actually smaller. It's sleek. I thought that was a plus. Um, let's see. I don't thought I didn't really see nothing bad. Like I like people were getting on me because I said the Microsoft show and the and the X looked really good and people were just mad for no apparent reason. I really don't have any gripes uh with uh what they showed. I thought they showed what they needed to show and from the system from what this from what the system looked like is gonna do, I'm I'm happy. I'm I just wanna be, I just wanted to be out and about in people's hands so they can play it. Hey, real quick, before we move on to the next pros and cons, do you want to hear what um, Kid Smooth and Cal were singing when they when they announced the uh, Xbox yes. One? You want to hear? Oh they, they went to the, yo, they went to the, Negro, <laughs> yo, they went to the Negro spirituals on me. They was in there. Oh yo, they was in there shucking and jiving, talking about some, what a mighty God. We serve. <laughs> you lying, G. What a mighty God. Are you we serve. You didn't think he was doing Negro spirituals, though? Yo, they were singing the Negro spirituals with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do call it the black Jesus. So why not? Yeah, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. They, they, they didn't do that. I was, I was, I was expecting, I was, I was, them, I was expecting them to go crazy. I was expecting them to go crazy over it, but nah, they, they were chill. They were, they were chill. <laughs> I, it looked to me, it looked like after they, like after Xbox's uh conference or whatever, and Kids Move came back and was on Red's live stream, she sounded more excited than he did. I'm like, damn, you you ain't excited? Like, Red was excited. Like, she was like, yo, this is what I've been wanting from Xbox, and I'm excited, and such, such. And he was just like, uh, uh. That yeah. was a, that, before we <laughs> switch real quick to just touch on that, though, that was the case with um a few of the, like, hardcore Xbox fans. When they came out that conference, they had the still face, and I was hyped. I was excited. I was like, well, I, I was, I was suspect real, real quick, real, 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 real quick. I was suspecting, you know, to see them and be like, oh, yo, that was great. And they would be like, yeah, man, that was awesome. They were, they were a little disappointed. Like when I first saw Kiss Move before everything settled in and stuff, um, he was a little disappointed too. Like I was like, really? He's like, yeah, I wasn't really yeah. like that. And he did stay on his planet Xbox last night. The reason that he was disappointed. He was disappointed because two games got pushed back to 2018, State of Decay 2 yeah. being one. And yeah. that was, and, and, and I'm going to be honest, I was disappointed too. Think about it. I've been waiting. We've been talking about State of Decay yeah, 2. I thought we were going to play that this fall. Oh, and yeah. I was, then, I was upset about yeah. that too. Yeah. And, and to hear that that's not coming out. And then Sea of Thieves, I think, was pushed back as well. So some people were disappointed to hear that. So they was like, oh, my gosh, uh, I'm not going to be able to play State of Decay for me because mm -hmm. I was feeling that. You know, yeah, it, yeah, initially. Yeah. I was disappointed about I was disappointed about State of the K. I was I, that let me down. Um see if these I don't give nothing about no see if these, but yeah, I mean I understand from an Xbox fan perspective, you guys are waiting for uh, these games to come out because it's so sparse over there. So you needed that. So well, I get it. I, I, I get it. I, 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 there you go. I, I, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly just touch on you know my, my pros pretty much. Uh the Xbox One X definitely being being smaller. I think uh you know, it's we can go back and forth about this power argument and where we were and where we are now. The thing about it is it's here and it is the most cow powerful console on the market. And I think this is just Microsoft and the Xbox team's opportunity to bring us, uh, you know, games, quality games, great games running on the Xbox one that are X that are able to utilize uh, its its full and um, all of its power at some point, whether that's out of the gate, down the road, however they do it. I was excited about the diverse lineup. I felt like Ash and Black Desert, uh, Super Lucky's Tell. I thought those were games. Uh, I think the last night, it just showed, uh, a, 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 you know, just diversifying their portfolio. Mm -hmm. The Dragon Ball Z game. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is on an Xbox uh, stage, stage. Stage right now. And it was, mm -hmm. just, it was just great. To see, uh, I, as far as con for me, the only con for me, con for me is that I cannot pre-order the Xbox One X. <laughs> there you go. That's the that's the con for me. Con that's the only con because I mean I'm like okay, when can I pre-order? 
this baby. And I have to tell you, there's a difference between not only watching that conference, and I think Nicodemus, you can attest to this, mm -hmm. live and in person, mm -hmm. seeing that conference on, on, on stage and, and live, mm -hmm. and as well as playing the games. Yeah. Yeah, it's, okay. a, it's a big it, difference. It, it's a big difference mm -hmm. because when I was hearing some of the feedback, oh, that game didn't really look, or oh, that game, I'm like, yes, it did. Yes, it does. And then when mm -hmm. we were able to play the games, I was like, oh, my gosh, a lot yeah. of us were stunned to see those games that were running in 4K. Yeah. The yeah. visuals were off the hook. It was it was ridiculous, y'all. It was ridiculous seeing a lot of those games. So, uh, yeah, that's... That's, uh, yeah, agreed, agreed, ma. Agreed. For me, for me, I'm, I'm pretty. I don't have it too many cons, just like the rest of you guys. Number one, uh, Mama see the hit on it that I can't pre-order it right now. Mm. Uh, it kind of hit me heavy because I thought I'd be able to pre-order it off the rip, and we don't know when the pre-order is going to be available. It's, it's stuck through the FCC or something like that. So that was, <clears throat> you know, my first con. And my second con is that this whole time I took the words true 4K as native 4K. Mm. And we're not getting true 4K. Like I, I kind of I knew going in, you, we probably wouldn't see it all the time. But that's the case. We will see mostly. It, it'll be 1080p and it'll be 60. But to see it's going to be checkerboard and upscale 4K, that's not true 4K to me. Mm. Now to flip that over on, to on on, on what games? games? On all the games? Not all the not all the games. A lot yeah, of not, the games. A lot of the games. What I'm saying though, no, like well, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> to, to flip it because I cause I don't want, I don't want people running. Wait a minute, what, what games? Wait a minute. When we make statements like that, that but I think we should say what games are we talking about? We shouldn't say that it's not true 4K. If they're gonna if there are games that are going to be running native 4K, then we need to say what those games are. If there are games that aren't going to be running native 4K. And they're going to be utilizing checkerboarding and other uh, uh, methods. Then we should say what those games are. But just to say the console is not true 4K. I didn't say that. No, I'm not saying you said that. I'm saying when people say that because I've seen that all over uh, over Twitter myself that the Xbox One X isn't a true 4K yeah, system. But, I mean, the Pro got. The what same. I was saying. What I was saying was that my cons is when when they when they was talking about true 4K, I expected I, I wanted it to be all the time. And, and that's not going to be the case. It's going to be some games us up, uh, upscaling a checkerboard. But like I said, to flip to flip it over to my pros, my pro is that it is exactly what they said it was going to be. And it is the most powerful console on the market. It is the best place to play your multiplats on the console. So I think the pro and con kind of work, they work hand in hand. You know, I wanted, I, I, I wanted the true 4K because in my eyes, true 4K isn't native, but Apparently, true 4K also means checkerboarding and upscaling. They work hand in hand, um, but a lot of the fanboys on both sides. It kind of hurt exactly. <laughs> you know, my, my I was pro, on both sides. Cause you, pro, I think a lot of people that kind of notice is I like the fact that they put the um, the fans in the back, so the top looks sleek and it's absolutely gorgeous. Like the design of this console mm -hmm. is amazing. The fact that they don't have the fans on top anymore, they put it in the back, it's absolutely I'm just amazing. It's smaller. It looks smaller. Exactly. <laughs> Being smaller is great. But the fact that it'll be the best place, the best the best versions of our multiplayer games that on console, I think that was absolutely plus what they said it was going to be. And that's exactly what that is. I think it's I think it's absolutely amazing console. It's definitely gonna be a day one for me. I Expect a four ninety nine. I pray for three ninety nine, but you really, you really can't complain because if you if you want the best resolution and graphics on console, that's the way to go. It's gonna cost you a little more. If you don't care about that stuff, get the Xbox One S or whatever the case may be. Um, but I think overall, man, it was absolutely. I, I think everybody can agree it's more pros than cons when it comes to the console itself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then you know, as far as like the uh, upscaling and all that stuff. Uh, who on this panel was calling that from the beginning? Who who was calling that? You also call God of War to come out this year too. So hey, why we gotta bring old shit? Why we gotta bring <laughs> old pain bullshit all the time? Like I, I guess I'm not understanding what this um you know, what this what this debate is or conversation is about because. Yeah, I'm, I'm not understanding. Well, okay, let me let me let me let me just break it down from my perspective. Is that 
Um, I we were we talked about this before, and I was saying that um, with the pro and stuff, there are some games that are native 4K. There are some games that are upscale, check more render. And I said mm-hmm. it's going to be the same thing with the Xbox One X. I said like, you're going to have some games that are native, and you're going to have some games that are sparse rendered. That's just, more games. That that's just a, yeah, yeah. I can agree to that. But I was saying that from the beginning, and a lot of Xbox people and stuff like that. They were like, no, no, it's going to be like native in this. What no, this I think that what means. they were saying is that like, first party I was like, games. No, I was, no, no, I'm saying I'm not on this panel. You guys weren't that oh. damn crazy on this panel. You weren't that damn crazy. <laughs> I mean, y'all said some, y'all been saying some crazy shit about this black Jesus. You have, I'm not going to lie, but you weren't that damn crazy to say every single game was going to native 4K. Y'all, y'all didn't say that, but a lot of people were feeling that way. <laughs> And I yeah. was like, I was like, nah, fam, it's not gonna be that way. <laughs> it's gonna be similar to the pro. This is a mid-gen refresh, and they're gonna do what they need to do to make these games look the best they can. But this game, this console is not powerful enough to have every single game native 4K. You know what I'm saying? It's just and not. I think, I think the biggest issue, in my opinion, is the 60 frames per second. Like, yeah. yep, that, that, that's, that's where I thought that, the native 4K that, thing that's was. That's my only con. That's my only con, man. That's what I thought. The, the thing about it with me was. I had that feeling for both Sony and Microsoft because I was like, some of these games need to be not even just Sony and Microsoft, just the the, the whole developers in general. I was like, forget 4K. Can you at least do 1080p 60 first? <laughs> like you can't even get 1080p 60 on these joints. Talking about going to 4K 30, mm-hmm. you're trying to jump like you jumping um, hurdles when you ain't even jumped the one in front of you. Like, do I we know? Crazy. But do we know out the gate what games are going to be running native 4K okay. 60 frames per second on Fumble. Xbox One X other than Forza Motorsport? Uh, yeah. Super, super yeah. Lucky Stand. Yeah. It's the only other game besides Forza that's uh, that's native. The um native. anthem anthem's gonna use the sparse rendering technique they what said. about paladins i know that's 4k 60 but i don't know if it's native i know they came out and said 4k 60. uh mama see nobody cares about no game called paladins don't tell me what anybody care Gears, about Gears 4 multiplayer would be 4k 60. it's a game right and we're gamers so we can yeah, talk I, about games I don't, don't tell me what no game nobody don't care time. about <laughs> yo mama see that's my first time hearing about that i don't know for sure no, I saw them tweet it out. Paladins, they did tweet it. They tweeted okay. out 4K 60, but I just don't no. know if it's native. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't but what I'm saying is, I just like to know the games. When we know how the discussions, we know what games. And here's the thing oh. I sat into a, a developer interview, and when we asked a developer, were they going to, was this particular game? And I think, no, the game wasn't Alex. Was it Alex? When uh, we asked if they were going to take advantage of the Xbox One X power and resources, what he said is, it's just too soon right now. And so because the system just came out that they have to, you know, they have to address that later, it's just too soon. Mm -hmm. So I want to take a wait and see approach before I start saying this system isn't isn't this because to be honest, it's a, it's it's new and unlike I mean I'm not quite sure how the pro the PS4 pro how 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 long the developers had that system in hand but from being on the floor and hearing them a lot of them the uh, especially the mid to smaller ones they are they don't even have the SDK for it and so to to ask them or to you know what are you going to do or how are you going to take advantage a lot of them right now are still kind of up in the air because they're from saying the ones i talked to is, is from the ones i talked to is 50 50. Uh, i can say i can confirm that raiders of the uh lost planet if you play that game at uh at the uh uh i'm sorry at the freaking e3 i'm about to say psx at e3 uh, that's gonna be native 4k yeah so yeah I, so now I, we've got one two three four four yeah. that we know is native 4k well, I, I know for sure, like with the Pro. Oh, Shadow of War is made of 4K. They yeah, I know that. with the Pro, okay. when it was first out, that it hadn't even got to all the developers yet when it first came out, which was kind of weird. It seemed like it was a little rushed. Um, Because that's the reason why Horizon pushed back. Because they uh they and they added the HDR and all that stuff late late in this, the cycle. Because a lot of the uh, developers didn't have the, the actual box. So I thought that was weird. I don't know why they do that though. That that seems kind of backwards, but that's just me. I don't understand why they do that. They put they kind of push developers uh behind when they do that stuff. Like some I know some developers want to take advantage, but they can't because they don't they don't have the box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So mm. now I do want to give a, a ha 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 
and the fact that Nicodemus X because it's 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 kind of it's kind of a joyful moment when he's wrong because when he's right, right he let us he lets us know that he's right. I mean we all kind of have to deal with that, right? So he said God of War was coming out this year. And wrong. No man, wrong. that that hurt, man. That was a what down is? point for me at the conference, man. I was like, I was it, hurt. I was it hurt. Is moving, it is moving to twenty eighteen, and I will say, as of right now, for both consoles xbox and ps4 2018 is looking really good but for the ps4 that joint is looking stacked with already three confirmed hitters coming out in the first quarter of the year yeah with god of war uh-huh. spider-man and crap i, 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 I knew god of war wasn't coming out this when year day's gone coming out when's that day's day? gone that's it's 2018 be- right yeah, no, I got a feeling that it's coming out this year, and they're gonna say something at uh, Gamescom because they didn't get Days Gone didn't even get a date. None of it got none of it. That's, that's, that's gonna be twenty eighteen. None of it. Yeah, none of it got a date. Oh, and Detroit. When is Detroit? Detroit is dropping. Detroit twenty eighteen. Yeah. And yeah, David Cage takes like five years for his games though, so I I got a feeling that it ain't coming out till next year. Nicodemus Yo. and Crunker, I have a question for y'all. Y'all talk about yeah. some of the Xbox people were quiet coming mm. out of the conference, right? Uh-huh. But I want to know how come y'all PlayStation people, are, y'all weren't just quiet. Y'all were sneaking out the back door coming mm. out of the conference. Like, y'all didn't want nobody to see y'all up in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that. For a <laughs> hey, explain that to me, Crunk and, and, and uh, Nicodemus. I'm I'll waiting. Let, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Crunk go first. Yeah, explain. You got some explaining to do, Crunk. I mean, I'm going to I'm say this. <laughs> every conference had down points and great moments. It's like I feel like every every conference did this year, except for Ubisoft. I think Ubisoft had the best conference. Um, with Sony's conference, like we said before we went on air, I had issues with it. And like I said before, they all they have down years. Like 2014 was not the best year for Sony. Um, and I I took it. I took what it, what what they gave me, and I was like, uh, Sony, you fucked up this year. But the conference but, actually an hour. But, but, I didn't watch it to two days later. But but the hour long to to yeah, me, it was just an hour. they showed. Yeah, I didn't like that either. And the reason why I didn't like that because their pre show could have been in their main show, and it would have made the show a lot better. Facts. Um, and so some, they would have had more time the games in the pre show. Every game in the pre show was coming out this year, and I'm like, why didn't you put that in your main show? That was stupid. I don't know who made them have that great idea to put every game that was in the pre-show coming out this year, not in the main show. That made Nicodemus. All right, that so, made absolutely so, no sense. Yeah, let me go ahead and. Uh, oh no, no, let me get let me get it out though. Let oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I gave Microsoft props for their show, and I I said their show was really good, and I liked Sony's show except for I think it was like maybe one or two games that they showed. I was like, oh, why did you show that? But when it came to the the actual games that they showed, I was impressed. Every, almost every single game that they showed, I liked coming from first party and second party. So I was good at the end of the day. I saw Spider Man. I saw uh, Days Gone look better than what it did last year. It looked way better. So I, that shows me that Sony Ben has been working. So you um, didn't feel like it was a refresh, just a refresh of what you see. Oh, I didn't like it. And, 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 and I said I mean, that. And I said that. <laughs> I was upset that they did not show a new game. I was mad at that. I was pissed off that they did not show uh 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 Sucker Punch's new game. They held back. And I said that was an excuse. They shouldn't have did that. They should have just showed it. Because they got, even though I know they got PSX, they get they should have showed something new. And the thing is, they showed something new, but they showed it in the pre-show. I'm like, why you showed it in the pre-show? It's a new IP. That was stupid. You showed a new IP in the pre-show and then you didn't put it in with, it didn't make no sense. Um, And the new IPs that they did show, they were VR. They showed like three new IPs, but they were all VR games. What is the deal with the hate on VR? How no, is I don't, VR? No, no, no. Not you. No, VR, no. But no, that, that not Final you. Fantasy fishing game should have never been up there. Trash. Oh, uh-huh. that, was trash. that was Final <laughs> Fantasy Bass Pro Edition. <laughs> Let's be real. Like, that was some trash. But the other VR games they showed, I thought those looked dope. I just don't like VR. To answer your question, Ma, I don't like it. I tried it so many times. I just don't like it. Well, I don't necessarily care for it myself, but I, I think, I you didn't, know. I, I didn't hate on VR because, I, like I, I told Nick, the the uh, Until Dawn team, they showed their new uh their new IP, 
But they showed it at the beginning of the show. I'm like, no, put that in the show. Yeah. That would have been better than that Final Fantasy fishing game. Right. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. For me, for me, as far as like the conference, yeah. Like I the thing was with me, I was hyping up the conference because I was with a bunch of Xbox guys. I was I was rolling with Tick. So they were all, you know, huge Xbox fans. And I was hyping up that conference like the whole day. I was like, y'all had y'all day yesterday. Today is Sony day. I don't want to hear shit about Xbox. I don't want to hear shit about Nintendo, Ubisoft, none. I, it's Sony's day today. You're going to see greatness. You're about to see this heat. You heard me? So we get down and watch the conference, man. And they started off for me wrong. I mean, I'm an Uncharted fan, man. But they started off showing that damn uncharted again we've seen it too many times then they went to the freaking dlc horizon i know blasphemy but it's freaking dlc stop why are we showing dlc at a freaking conference um and then on top of that they showed too much vr i couldn't stand that shit. and then they didn't show a variety of games like as far as indies or anything like that then they want to show marvel versus capcom what is that shit? you know it was just so oh, many I heard things demo. Dog, dog, it, dog, it was so many things that they could have shown, like Crunk said, that I'm like, why did they choose this selection of games? So, yes, yes, I had my head down and I snuck out the back and I put that motherfucking M on, in my name on Twitter. Okay. okay. Because, oh, I wasn't doing yes. all that now. Like, no, I, I did. did. For, for 24, for 24 <laughs> hours. Hey, it's, uh, Nick, is Matterfall, is that a, a PS4 exclusive? Yeah, PS4 yes, and PC. Yeah. Okay, okay. So what you think about that? Matterfall, yeah, Matterfall, Matterfall was dope. Matterfall yeah. was dope. It was, but they it was, didn't it was show dope. it in the main show. They didn't. Nah, but it was on the floor. It was, it was on the floor. floor. I, played, I played like two yeah. or three times. My And it, it was fun. It's challenging, just like mm -hmm. how smart games usually are. The only yeah. thing I didn't like was the, like, the control scheme. If you remember, you had to press R1 to jump. That was awkward to me. Um, So I it took okay. me a while to get used to it. But it was it was fun. I do. Mm -hmm. like, I'm looking forward to that. Like, like Mama said, I don't know. My bad. No, no, no. Let me get this out real quick. Like, my, my, my thing was they should have showed the, the pre-show stuff within the show, and it would have made it a whole lot better. And I was, I, I was a little pissed. I ain't gonna front that Microsoft or Sony didn't show any new first-party games. I was mad at that. I'm just being real for both. And I think this is the second year in a row that Microsoft has done that. Mm. Aloy was the best thing shown at Sony's E3. <laughs> Aloy. Because <laughs> Aloy Bay. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was that was. I think that was disappointing. That old Colossus. Yeah, buddy. That old Colossus made me scream in here. My mama was screaming. She was like, "What the hell are you in there screaming for?" I'm like, "Ma, they just showed Shadow of the Colossus." She didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> did you all, Fame? Did you hear uh, Phil Spencer's explanation as to why he didn't show any first party games? Oh yeah, played? it's the same thing he's been saying for a while. But I've been trying to tell people, and I was in other podcasts, and people want to get in their feelings and cry and start calling me type of names. I've been telling people this for months. Phil Spencer had already told people that he is keeping things closer to the vest, and he's not going to show things until they're closer to be ready to be released. So if he, he got, they got games that they're working on, but they're they're still too maybe three years out. So you're going to wait for him to show it, which I think is, I'm, I'm actually okay with that. As long as we get other stuff in between, yeah. I'm okay with that. And I said, this is nothing new. I've been telling folks for the longest and I'd have been cussed out. I call type of names. So I'm telling people, Phil has already told y'all, if it ain't close to being released, you ain't seeing it. I'm not going to lie that I didn't want to see it. Cause I, I did. I felt like they needed to show mm -hmm. a new IP with the Scorpio one X, but I also <laughs> said doing our podcast prior to that, to, to E3, I remember Phil, Phil Spencer saying on the podcast Unlock mm -hmm. that, you know, if you're expecting me to just pull out a first party game, you know, uh, you know, out of my Slap back. A trailer pocket, together. I just felt like he, he was he, he was he was hinting that that's not going to happen. And then when he said, OK, I could have easily shown a trailer of what we're working on. But then that would have taken resources away from the game itself. And he just didn't want to throw teasers out there. I just feel like that Phil just he's not trying to. Uh, do that. Let me dingle something in front of you. Get to wet your whistle anymore. When he puts it out there, he just this is what we're going to deliver. Uh, I guess yep. pretty much like Bethesda does. This is the game, and this is when it's coming out. I think so, going forward, I, I, when you see an Xbox game, it's, it's a big, a big AAA game. It's coming out within a year. For me, I, it's it's. I think it's a pro and a con. I like mm -hmm. what's coming. Yeah, I'm not going to front. Like I love when when Sony does that where they, they dangle something in front of me because it, it keeps my, my whistle wet and I know it's coming. Like God, even though when I saw all those 2018s, it hurt my soul. It hurt my soul. But for God of War, I knew it wasn't coming this year. 
just for the fact that every God of War comes out in March. Every single one of them, except for one. Yeah, how many years have we been dangled with God of War? <laughs> War, okay? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> no, 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 it ain't been coming. And same thing with... Um, Typical Mama Cedar. Same thing with Horizon. Horizon did the same thing, but God of War oh comes God, out in March, and I knew it was coming in March. <laughs> No, yes, on that, that, that choice should have came this year. Screw it. Um, no, on it should have. It should have. No, I thought Days Gone was coming this year. Days Gone should be coming this year. Didn't I'd rather the game ship when it's ready to play. Honestly, I don't. I don't have a problem with games being delayed or pushed back. You know, I. I don't either, I, man. But I don't, and I don't want to be dangled. I don't want to. You don't dangle something in front of me that's I'm not going to be able to Here play. We, we go. Oh my god! But Sony does Here it all don't, the time. Don't, <laughs> don't. Okay, don't put something in front of me. That I won't be able. <laughs> you know what? It's time to end the show. On that note, right there. <laughs> I man, you know what? Remember, y'all don't beg a man in front of Mama Cena okay. unless she can hand it down. Don't show me a game, okay? <laughs> that I won't be able to play until, you know, three or four years from now. I don't know. I don't even know if two years is good enough. I kind of like the year. If you're going to show it to me, I want it to come out within the year. I don't mind two or three years. I don't mind it, but that's just yeah. me. It's, Yo, it, it's, it's, <laughs> as long as they hit me up and show me stuff in between to let me see it and put it back in place, I'm fine. Well, it's better, I, I would say this. It's better to have something to dangle than just to be bare bald. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Okay, y'all. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so check it out. This has been a great episode, as usual. Um, it's. I promise y'all, one day we're gonna get double XP after dark going. Because this ain't nothing compared to some of the stuff that really be said before that. All of us need to do PSX and do a live podcast. Jesus, we're cracking on each other the whole time. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> nothing yeah. relevant. Let's get, let's get these outros going, man. First of all, oh, we got my, my light skin to the brother, Mr. Nicodemus Xbox. Yeah, baby. You already know I, I go where the Indies go. I go where the Indies go. I can't help it. But, man, great show, man. Great to be back with the team, whatever. I would just also like to say, go on record, it was great seeing Mama Sita once again. Beautiful, beautiful woman. Always good to hang out with her, even though I didn't get to hang out with you much. But it, I definitely, I definitely, definitely hyped to see you and stuff like that. So, um, but, yeah. Definitely good to be back with the team. Missed you guys. All that good stuff. Shout out to the chat. Shout out to everybody who watched and checked us out. Hit that like button to counter the haters out there. You know what I'm saying? And um, peace out. Next up, don't forget, unless you're going to let her have it now, don't dangle it in her face. <laughs> Mama Cedar. Oh, my God. Well, first of all, let me apologize to y'all, my team, and to my viewers for being late. I don't know what was happening. There was some technical issues, but I finally got it straight. And um, let me say this. My favorite game at E3, I don't know if you guys talked about it, but honestly, the one that's on the radar for me is Elix. It's an open world, like science, fantasy, um, RPG game. And it doesn't have like load times and there's no in-game pausing. Elix. El it's Elix. E-L-E-X. I think it's T-H-Q. Okay. I believe yes. I it's go to my Twitter. I I I uh I tweeted out some uh gameplay of it. It's like 60 minutes, and you like choose like four factions, berserkers and outlaws and some apps and whatever. Okay. But that game is on my radar. And I just want to say, um, I I just as a gamer, uh this week, this past two weeks, I'm just hanging out with my fellow gamers and exploring my favorite hobby um, with them and talking about them and engaging and being able to attend E3 as a fan, as a gamer, as well as experience some media eliteness was just um, just super fabulous for me. And I'm just appreciative and thankful that I'm here and I can say that I had that experience. So not to sound all um, upbeat and presidential, but I just wanted to throw that out there. <clears throat> <laughs> That's and last about. but definitely not least, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess Crunk Girl will be the classy one on the show now since it ain't Mama oh, Cedar no more. Crunk Girl. <laughs> well, before I go, Jesus. I was gonna, I was I was gonna wonder if he was gonna ask for a favorite game. So Nick, before I go, what was your favorite game? My favorite game that was shown at the press conference or to play, like, or uh, I don't know, like which one. At the press, at the press I mean, conference, no, it doesn't matter. Like your game, like E three, like what was your favorite game? 
Oh man, that's tough. Um, so I'm gonna have to say the game that had intrigued me the most and got me wanting to know more about it that I, I've been thinking about the most would have to be The Last Night. Um, that game right there got me really, really intrigued. Um, now as far as favorite game that I played, um, it's a toss up between um House Marks Matterfall because that's the one I played the most, and believe it or not, um, I would have to say this game called Strange Brigade. Uh, that was pretty fun. I played oh, that. Yeah. yeah, I played that yes. quite a few times. I played that quite oh, a few yes. times. That was um, fun. Now, Super Lucky Tales, of course, was a highlight for me as well. Um, but I'm just basing on how many times I went back to play particular games. So, but yeah, ultimately the the last night that game um, looked spectacular. Uh, that was my that was the game that intrigued me the most. All right. Well, now I can do mine. I just want. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Fame, but since Mama <laughs> said her favorite game, I'm like, why? I mean, I'll let. That's Nick right. It's only play. fair. Yeah, man. It's only fair. Um, but yeah, man. Shouts out to everybody. I was excited to get everybody back together, man, and see how everybody's experience was. Um, as a gamer, y'all all y'all all know that like E3 is like a dream, and like you, we never knew that we were gonna be able to go there or either be represented there, and just being around the community and that's what it's all about at the end of the day it's community and video games so um mm -hmm. shouts out to both of y'all for having a blast and representing us out there man i appreciate that um i had a great time i love doing this podcast mm -hmm. show and shouts out to the, the guy that was in the chat and was like some sensible podcast we oh, appreciate yeah, that Sam, appreciate it, brother. um no for me my favorite game probably was a uh, spider-man because i'm a huge spider-man uh, girl, I love that game, and and I would say the second game probably have to be Shadow of the Colossus. We finally getting a, a reasonable remake, like an actual remake of a game that if you if you go look at the comparisons, that game was like straight dusty, and um, <laughs> um I'm glad Blue Point is getting the chance to actually remake the game because they do great a great job. Um, but yeah, man, um, y'all hit me on Twitter, um, at Crunk Girl Seven Eleven. Um, and thanks for everybody for coming through, man. And I really enjoyed the podcast because I love when I get on here and we can talk about sensible stuff and, and you know what I'm saying? We can get it we in on that stuff. We can disagree can. and all that stuff. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. That's but we ain't talking crazy on here either. We just ain't out there just doing crazy stuff either like some people. like on I, both I think, You know, I think it's because we know each other like um, in real life to an extent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we know we know who we really are. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why yeah. I think we it's easy for us not to cross certain boundaries and stuff. We don't have the protection of, you know, the internet. Cause I, I said it before, I already know if I cross some lines, I might get smacked by Mama Cita. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. so see her oh, yeah. in real life. I ain't gonna get it's no fun. hug. I'm about to get that smack to the face. Cause, but, cause he know I actually you know. jump on the plane and fly my behind <laughs> over the <laughs> 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 that, You that, in the airport, that, airport that, bro. But that's, 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 fam that's family shit, though. That's family shit. That's, that's respect. You know what I'm saying? That's respect. That's right. That's right. No, I, I like to fight, so. Yeah. Yeah, I like, <laughs> I, like, I like to fight, too. But fame, fame really like to fight. Fame be ready. Like, when we in these streets, don't look at don't look at fame cross. I'm telling you, I gave a warning. I gave a warning to people. You know what I'm saying? You better watch what you say. <laughs> uh -oh. you know, I'm just saying. You never know who you're going to run into I one day. You, know, you never know, man. I, I like to have fun with some people, but yeah. But we're actually going to get up out of here. This has been episode 28 of the Double XP Podcast. Thank you guys for walk, walking, rocking with us. It has been fun. The crew is back. We will have guests again um, the next episode. But I just wanted to be, you know, the, the Fantastic Four just for today's episode. But we'll be back having guests again next show. Uh, we out of here. Here we go. All right. Deuces.